Hi, I'm Greg Botta from UC San Diego, and thank you for having me here today to talk about CT DNA analysis in colorectal cancer. So a quick overview, uh, CT DNA or circulating DNA is a variety of different DNAs in the bloodstream. They can consist of tumor DNA that's placed into the bloodstream, otherwise known as circulating tumor or CT DNA, or it can consist of your normal germline and somatic DNA uh, from cells that have either died or apoptosed. The circulating tumor DNA is thought to be about 1% of all all circulating free DNA. And most of us several tumor DNA tests um, are derived from the tumor as well as the liquid CT DNA analysis. And the reason why that's important is because it provides a personalized or informed approach to evaluate a for residual disease or if they are responding to treatment or not. And this is compared against most panels, which are agnostic. Either the patient has the genes on that panel or they do not. And that's why the sensitivity is greatly reduced. Further, ctDNA has reproducible speed and the fact that it takes a representative sample derived from the blood as a gene signature. And that enables someone to follow a patient's tumor and specifically their own tumor in the blood. Lastly, it, permits detection of founder mutations or otherwise known as truncal mutations, such that even as the tumor spreads and or metastasizes, you're still able to detect those initial mutations in the uh, tumor DNA of the, um, of the or as well as within the bloodstream. Now, the application of cell-free DNA and circulating tumor DNA is on a continuum. On one hand of the continuum, we have asymptomatic diagnosis. So someone walks down the street and you drew their blood and they had high representative cell tumor DNA, you would be concerned that they have cancer. On the other hand of the spectrum, we have metastatic targeted treatment options, um, panels which specific genes that have specific therapies to them. And, and we have a lot of commercial applications of that and most oncologists order it. In the middle is where ctDNA uh, falls. It helps us make vision treatments in the adjuvant setting. It helps us detect minimal residual disease after treatment. And it helps us to detect monitoring and surveillance uh, after treatment. The idea is, is to pick up molecular or minimal residual disease, MRD. And the idea of that is, is that we do that to a degree with certain tumor biomarkers such as CEA. It's just that the sensitivity and specificity is very low. Most oncologists have come across patients in which they did not produce CEA and it was an uninformed assay to be able to follow their treatment. Or they were uh, patients who had elevations of CEA for other reasons not related to their cancer. And we were looking for a, a more sensitive test and that's where ctDNA comes into play. It's able to detect the molecular disease at each stage of treatment. So if we follow this over a timeline uh, in evaluating ctDNA, we would expect patients who had a non-metastatic disease that was resected um, at surgery to have a ctDNA that goes from positive and decreases uh, down. Um, there may come a point where it does not completely go away after surgery, and in which place we would initiate adjuvant therapy or chemotherapy to try to reduce that to below threshold of 0% on detection and then again, follow patients over time surveillance. If that ctDNA comes above threshold at any time, then we would know that there was a recurrence or that the disease was refractory to any treatment that we had. So we're gonna discuss adjuvant treatment, um, decision-making and studies for ctDNA. And the idea basically in the colorectal cancer space is, is we have basically four stages of disease. Stage one, it's clear cut, we don't give chemotherapy. Stage four, it's clear cut, yes, we do give chemotherapy. Stage two and stage three disease is not as clear cut. There are some high risk stage two disease patients in which they would derive benefit from chemo. And there's some low risk stage three patients that might derive from de-escalation or sometimes maybe no chemotherapy. The problem is, is we just don't know how to substratify these patients traditionally based on the IDEA trial and other types of analyses, we use things such as lymphovascular invasion, perineural invasion, um, whether or not this, the tumor is T4. Um, but if what we could do is instead use a guided approach or tumor informed approach to help substratify those patients, we would greatly help the uh, patients either get the patient uh, chemotherapy that they need without over treating or 
decreased treatment in which we are um, overburdening them with too long or length of treatment and the treatment related side effects. The initial study to validate this uh, was um, came from Science Translational Medicine in 2016. And basically they looked at stage two patients who had surgery, but no chemotherapy on the left. And what you can see is, is that that post-operative CT DNA was negative. Those patients did very well. But if that CT DNA was positive, those patients had a greater chance of recurrence. And the idea is, is could we have used that CT DNA to guide us to help get those patients whose CT DNA was positive, better treatment? And you can see on the right, patients who are stage three or who got post chemo, um, uh, or who got chemo, excuse me, in the adjuvant setting, those patients then became CTDNA negative and therefore derived benefit from chemotherapy. Of course, there are still some patients even with surgery and with chemotherapy in which their CTDNA remained positive, And those patients were um, unable to derive a benefit from their first chemotherapy regimen. This has been validated in other types of uh, cancers and at different centers. Uh, in this case, this is the Signatera test. It's been validated in, in colon cancer, breast cancer, and bladder cancer. And in each case, when the DNA is negative after surgery, those patients have an improved relapse-free survival. However, when that CTA is positive and the chance of is is significant. And you can see those hazard ratios are 35 and 40 with very good sensitivity, 88% or above. This was also validated recently at ASCO 2020 at a completely different Terrazona at all. And basically you can see that those graphs mirror the original uh, graphs seen by the science translational team, as well as the Reinhardt et al. team in JAMA Oncology. Those patients in a single time point in the post-operative setting who have CT DNA negative have a very good disease-free survival. Those positive um, have a significantly um, increased risk of relapse. After they have definitive treatment or adjuvant treatment, you can see that there is a derivation of benefit. Those patients who have cell-free DNA that is now negative, or excuse me, CT DNA that is now negative after adjuvant therapy those patients continue to do well um, over time. So there is a subpopulation that if we clear the CT DNA, we can prove that these patients have a better overall um, chance of disease-free survival. Um, at ESMO in the past year, uh, there was a good study from Lupacus et al. basically looking in the oligometastatic disease. So patients who had metastatic colorectal cancer, perhaps to the liver, the lung, other areas, and if they had surgical resection of those areas, did the CT DNA clear? And if it cleared, um, those patients, did they do better or worse? And you can see here that um, basically these were patients all with surgery with curative intent. These were not diffusely metastatic patients and they followed the CT DNA over time. You can see here that the CT DNA was a significant prognostic factor for progression free survival and over on the far right, right, importantly, overall survival. Those patients who had CT DNA negative after resection of their oligometastatic disease had improved progression free survival. Um, with one time point serially, those patients did um, significantly better. So if you continue to have CT DNA that was negative over time, um, your uh, progression free survival was greatly improved. Further in the overall survival setting, those patients who CT DNA continued to be negative, had an improved overall survival. And, and this was uh, significant um, uh, with a hazard ratio of, of 4.6. Now, this has helped us with new studies on the horizon, uh, including the NRG uh, study, uh, phase two, phase three study using CTDNA as a predictive marker. And basically, it's following up on the science translational um, article in 2016, saying we're patients who are of stage two colon cancer, and we say that those are the patients that we would say they do not need adjuvant therapy. Let's get CTDNA on them. And if CT DNA is uh, negative, continue to do active surveillance, but if that DNA is positive, we're going to treat them. And basically the idea is to follow these patients forward and evaluate them um, to see how their outcomes respond as to whether or not additional treatment based on CT DNA is important. And to go one step forward, the Vega, uh, or excuse me, the um, Circulate Idea Japan trial, the Vega trial is evaluating whether or not patients with high risk stage two and additionally low risk stage three colon cancer patients um, who have a CT DNA that is positive pre-op and then negative preoperatively, whether or not they should go into KPOX for four cycles 
or a no chemotherapy arm and basically following with the Signatera CT DNA test um, over time. And the idea here is to see if we need to escalate certain patients uh, therapy or de-escalate other patients therapy uh, based on the CT DNA. Other studies evaluating CT DNA include the bespoke trial, which is basically an observational trial uh, in the adjuvant setting, determining whether or not the information of CT DNA changes an oncologist's decision to treat a patient or not treat a patient. So this um, allows more flexibility for the treating oncologist to have a high risk stage two patient. And if their CT DNA is positive to move forward with treatment, or if the CT DNA is negative to not move forward. And then the same with stage three patients, if it's a low risk stage stage three patient and their CT DNA is negative, they may decide to go with three months of KPOX versus six months of full FOX. And this will be evaluated at the end of the treatment. Um, additionally, other areas that we are evaluating CT DNA in the adjuvant setting, but also in the treatment response setting. And in these types of trials, uh, one specific that came out was the INSPIRE trial. And this was a recent article in uh, Nature Cancer uh, by Bratman et al. And the idea was to say, can we use CT DNA to follow immuno-oncology um, response? And they used a variety of different um, tumors, including uh, head and neck and breast cancer and ovarian, as well as colorectal cancer, and said, over time, can we follow if these patients respond to immunotherapy or not? And if they do respond to immunotherapy or not, um, um, do they have a better outcome? And I think that this will be um, pushed forward into the colorectal uh, cancer space with the advent of more immuno-oncology uh, regimens, but especially in those patients that are MSI high. And you can see that um, in the case, the CT DNA with the Signatera test was able to follow these patients over time and help substratify patients who responded with their CT DNA decreasing with IO therapy. And those patients who had CT DNA um, on clear uh, with IO, their overall survival was 100%. And these are showing those exceptional responders to CT DNA, those patients who um, will have a great outcome on immunotherapy. However, there are some patients who do decrease their CAT DNA below uh, baseline, but do not fully clear it. That's in the green line. Those patients still do better um, than patients who are unable to decrease increase their CT DNA uh, from baseline. And the idea is, is that you're able to follow CT DNA over time as a responsive element to immuno-oncology or immunotherapy. You're all also able to give some prognostic information about people who clear and do not clear their CT DNA. And it may be a harbinger of patients who do clear their CT DNA to maybe get them off immunotherapy is something that will be evaluated in the future. Importantly, knowing that the side effect profile in the immunotherapeutics is not always zero, those patients that are not responding, you can get off earlier. In addition, those patients who have pseudo progression on scans, but decreasing CT DNA, an oncologist may um, decide to continue with IO therapy until clearance, um, showing that there's a decrease from baseline. Another way in which we're evaluating treatment response is the Stand Up to Cancer Act 3 trial. In this case, these patients who have had um, standard adjuvant Fulfox or KPOX um, in the stage three colorectal cancer space, um, those patients are now being evaluated after completion of their adjuvant therapy to see if they clear their CT DNA or not. And if you can go back to remembering, there are some patients who even after surgery and after adjuvant therapy do not clear CT DNA. And what do you do with those patients? In this case, what patients will do is or attempt full theory. Um, if they have a BRAF, they'll try um, drugs within the beacon trial, including encorafenib, benimetinib, and cetuximab. Or if they're MSI um, high, they may get an evolumab. And then at that time, you will be able to show with treatment response, if that CTD may does not clear, getting patients onto different regimens and then getting clearance, are they now able to show improved survival or not? Other studies in uh, this area include the dynamic uh, study um, out of the Australian um, uh, New Zealand cohort, basically evaluating stage three patients to whether de-escalate or escalate. And the point of all of this at the end of the day is, is that there are some patients who have recurrence-free survival that's excellent with their CT DNA negative, and perhaps we're over-treating these patients. And this is from the great white paper, uh, Desari et al. that just came out this year. And our, the idea is, is with these CT DNA negative patients, let's start trying to pull back on either 
either their chemotherapy or their length of chemotherapy and give them a really good outcome without side effects. Now there's a, on the other flip of the coin, on the other side, there's CTDNA positive patients. And those CTDNA positive patients may do better with either escalated therapy or longer therapy. And what we're starting to do with CTDNA now is starting to try to substratify these patient populations, be able to follow their disease over time and either increase or decrease dynamically their treatment uh, regimen or the time on treatment to give them the optimal response. Um, I thank you all for your attention today. Uh, I'm available for, via email for any questions that you may have, and I look forward to additional questions um, during the uh, discussion period. Thank you so much.